Hi everyone, it's Michelle from happypindesign.com and today I wanted to go over how to make an attractive pin. So a lot of people think that when they create pins, their pins have to be pretty. They think they have to be uh, feminine looking or the font has to be attractive, um, you know, like cursive or scripty. They think that um, the images have to have flowers or be girly and that's just not the case well you can totally do that if you want and that might be attracting um, your audience your specific audience might like that not everyone is going to have the same audience not everyone's going to have the same messaging so I wanted to go over what attractive content means because attractive content does not mean pretty content yes there is some sort of an appeal to your content it should look nice it should be attractive it should be clean but it doesn't have to necessarily be pink or pastel or have images of gorgeous people on it <laughs> that's just not that's just not a, the hard and fast rule to pinterest um what is attractive really depends on your audience your audience might really be attracted to keto diets or they might be attracted to fitness or they might be attractive attracted to um you know jewelry i don't know <laughs> they might just be attractive attracted to different things so it doesn't necessarily mean that your content is bad or that you're doing it wrong it just means that you need to find what your audience likes but there are some things that you can kind of embrace for your pins and for your website content as well one you need to make sure your messaging is clear. So when someone comes to your Pinterest account, clicks on one of your pin images, what the message on the pin says should jive with what's on your website. You don't want someone to click on that pin and think they're going to get something and then they come to your site and get completely something else. Um, <clears throat> that's not good, so don't do that. Whatever message you have on your pin should be consistent with what's on your website or what's on your Etsy account or wherever the pin is directing. Um, the second thing is you want to have a clean design. So, so while I'm not saying you have to have super pretty pins, you want to make them readable. You want the colors, uh, the color palette to go together. It doesn't matter if you're using yellow or brown or a different color besides pink or red or you know pretty pastel blues. Um, you can use any color that goes with your brand. Um, you can use any color that goes well together. So um, you don't have to make them look fem feminine. In fact, a lot of the bloggers that I follow do not use feminine colors. For instance, I follow Mira Coathand and her colors are like a teal and yellow, like a golden yellow color. Um, I follow Megan Williamson and hers are navy blue. So you don't need to have pinks in your palette. If you have pinks in your palette, cool. Um, but not everybody on Pinterest has pinks in their palette. So it's really okay to go a different route and use the colors that work for you. Um, also, I'm gonna backtrack a little on the messaging. When you're selecting photos to go with your pin, if you're writing, let's say you're writing about a keto diet, you want to you want the image to show that it has something to do with food or a diet you don't or even um losing weight you don't want to pick an image that has nothing to do with your message that is going to confuse the viewer they're not going to be sure what the pin's about and remember you have about two seconds to convince them so use images that go along try to stay away from abstract images you can try those out and see if they work but try try to use a lifestyle image where it's showing somebody actually using that thing that you're promoting um so if it's a keto diet maybe try to show a dinner table with food on it or if it's um you know you're trying to sell your jewelry show someone wearing the earrings that you're trying to sell use lifestyle imagery imagery as much as you are able to um, and look for stock photos that don't look cheesy and annoying and fake try to pick images that look realistic um, and again, make sure your pins make sense. So back to the third thing I wanted to talk about. So we, we talked about clear messaging. We talked about a clean design. Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about is consistent messaging. 
Some people love to use different colors on every single one of their pins. They don't stick to any kind of a format. They don't put their logo on their pins. Um, that's a mistake. I believe you should really focus on keeping a consistent color palette of, you know, three to five colors that you are, that are your brand and then using a logo or in the least using your website link and trying to keep the images similar. So if you're, if you're a person who likes to use flowers in all of your images, maybe, um, you know, maybe that's the, that theme that you go with, or maybe if you're a person who likes to use more of an animation style, you could do that with all of your images. Um, some people like to use photos. Some people like to use graphics. It really depends on what you're comfortable using or what you think is your brand. So, so be consistent with your brand. Those, these three things will really make your pin stand out. Um, you know, making sure also in your branding that you have and your messaging that you have a call to action, a step you want them to take. So don't just create a pin and put a pretty picture on it and put really good messaging on it and then leave out what you want them to do. So click here, learn more, get my free download, anything like that um, is going to be important on your pin as well. And also a note about the content that it leads to. So if it goes to your website, also make sure that that is attractive. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying it has to be pretty. It just has to look nice. It has to be attractive to your viewers. So, you know, walking through your blog posts and making sure it sounds great. Um, I read a statistic recently that people don't read from the top to the bottom a post. They skim. So use that to your advantage. Use bullets. Use bolded headings. Use subheadings. Use photos with captions on them. Use call-out boxes. So do that in your post and make your content just as attractive as your pin. And if you do that, you will have content that is attractive and pins that are attractive and they can work beautifully together um, for your marketing strategy. If you have any questions, please visit me at happypindesign.com and I look forward to hearing from you.